Good evening, everyone. I know it's very, very late, and so I will not take too much of your time. But you saw the film earlier. It's a film we produced recently that brings people up to date on what happened three years ago in Gush Katif. If you recall, and you know, to me, it's actually very interesting. Exactly three years ago, I was at Jody's conference. It was uh, Labor Day weekend, and it was actually the first time I have known Jody for many years. But it was the first time I was at a conference of hers, and uh, it was a very, very difficult time for me to leave Israel because I left just two weeks after the communities of Jews Katif were destroyed. And when I got here, Jody and some of the other people that were running the conference came up to me and said, "We need you to talk about Gush Katif." We don't know what else you came to talk about, but that's what you have to talk about. And I remember at that point how much support and sympathy we received here in the United States and audiences, Christian audiences all over the world on this issue. But tonight I want to go back a little bit and I want to bring, bring to you a bit of what I see. It's been three years and we've spent a lot of time trying to understand what happened, what happened three years ago, how was it that all these beautiful communities, communities with close to 10,000 people, communities with agriculture that went all over the world, how was it that all of this was destroyed? I don't have answers, but I want to share something that came to me today as I was trying to understand this, and I have to tell you, I woke up very, very early this morning because I was looking for something. I, I speak about this issue very, very often, and I say, I can't keep saying the same thing. I'm looking for meaning. I'm constantly looking for new thoughts, new ideas, and I was struggling with this all day. And I started flipping through my Bible, and I started reading Joshua. And as I read the first couple of chapters in the book of Joshua, it came to me. It came to me that what we read there in those first chapters of Joshua contain a message that is so alive and so potent to us today in understanding the issues that we are going through, not just what we experienced three years ago, but what we have been experiencing since the state of Israel was created, since the birth of the Zionist movement, since the renewal of Jewish life in the land of Israel in modern times. Now you all know, I don't have to teach you the Bible, but even way before Joshua, God spoke to Abraham and told him, appointed him as the father of the Jewish people in essence and told him to come to the land of Israel. And that is when the promise was born there on the mountains near Shechem, at the Oak of Moreh, right on a hilltop that today has a Jewish community called Elon Moreh, God spoke to Abraham and told him that he would give this land to his children. In 1975, in December of 1975, there was the eighth attempt and final successful attempt to settle the first modern Jewish community in Samaria, a group that called themselves Elon Moreh, a group that called themselves the Oak of Moreh, and wanted to settle as close to that very spot that Abraham first heard God's promise to him thousands of years ago. I was 18 years old, do not do the math, I was 18 years old, I was an American teenager, and I was in Israel for the year when this amazing event occurred. When the government of Israel, who was against the whole idea of settlement in Judea and Samaria, but that government of Israel compromised and allowed 30 families to settle in an army camp near what became the community of Kedumim located just a 10 minute drive away from I, where I live today. And I was studying in Jerusalem at the time, and a couple weeks later, a few friends of mine and I decided we were gonna hitch a ride out to that army camp and spend Shabbat. 
and we did. It was an absolutely amazing experience. It was something I had wanted to do, and it was a movement, this whole settlement movement, that's something that had fired my imagination for years. Again, picture me, I'm an American teenager. Yes, I'm an American Jewish teenager. I have been studying the Bible, and I have been a Zionist all my life, but what did I know? I was spoiled. I you know, got my driver's license at 16. I had a lot of fun. But there was a story that I'll take you back even back before 1975, and I see El Yakim sitting here looking at me. In 1968, there were a group of Jews who went to settle in Hebron, and El Yakim was one of them. But I knew there was a family that were very good friends with my parents in Cleveland, a family friend, and there was a young girl who was a college student in 1967 when the Six Day War broke out and that summer decided to go to Israel. And during that year, school year, 1967-68, in April of 1968, she joined this group of young people that went to settle in Hebron. Her name is Hannah Idels. And she was a family friend and we followed her story. And I remember when her parents got the word that she was getting married in Hebron and they packed up suitcase to go to this police station in the middle of nowhere for a wedding. Imagine American young girl getting married in a police station in the most horrible of conditions. These were the stories that I grew up on. And so in 1975, when I had the opportunity to go and spend Shabbat in Samaria, and to sleep in a tent in the freezing cold, windy February, January, excuse me, January night, Shabbat, in what became Kedumim, I jumped at the opportunity. I wanted to feel this pioneering spirit. I wanted to be a part of it. And when I, I remember, we got there on a Thursday night, Friday morning, we took a ride, walk around, and you know what? There was nothing there. There were no trees, there were no birds, you know what? You have to have trees in order to hear the birds because they need a place to rest. There were no trees, there were empty, barren hills. And there were people there that said to me, and I was younger, I was only 18, these people were a little bit older than me, I thought they were very old and wise, they were probably about 23. And they said to me then, and they said to all of us that had come out there, this is just the beginning. We have opened a gate there will be Jews settling all over these hills, all over Judea and Samaria. I would venture to say that most people in the world at that time didn't believe that that would really happen. There were a few crazy visionaries that believed it. And you know why they believed it? Because they read that story in the Bible where God spoke to Abraham and said, I will give this land to your children. Everybody quotes Genesis 12, I will bless those who bless you. Read the next few verses. I will give this land to your children. And these people believed it, and I believed it. And suddenly, before my very eyes, I had the opportunity to understand what those verses meant, the verses that I had studied as a child. I studied Bible from the time I was a very little girl, and I was very religious, and I believed it deeply, and I never, until that moment, had the opportunity to see these verses come alive before my very eyes, and they did. And God blessed these endeavors, and today there are 280,000 Jews, more, 300? 320,000 Jews living in Judea and Samaria. That is indeed a miracle. And it's a miracle that I think teaches us something about what you and I need to be doing. Because God is doing wonderful things in the land of Israel, but he's doing wonderful things through us.